Everybody and welcome to getting ready for fifth grade math like a boss. I'm Miss McCarthy. I am your host and I am your teacher to help you get ready for this eight week course. We are on week four, ladies and gents. It's day 16. Today we're going to be working with decimals um, and more specifically with multiplication and division of decimals. So to access the same problems that I am doing plus tons more to help you get ready just click the link in the description box below and that will take you um, to the same problems that I'm working out the same boss notes that we'll be doing and just hang around a little bit after I'm done teaching today and I will show you how to access it so without further ado let me teach you boss notes all right so here are your boss notes um, for multiplying and dividing decimals today. So in the first one, we've got 1.2, I'm sorry, let me read that properly. One and two tenths times three hundredths, because that three is in the hundredths place. Now don't freak over multiplying decimals because if you know how to multiply multi-digit numbers, you're gonna be fine. Watch me. When you're multiplying decimals, you forget, you imagine that the decimal is not even there, okay? So kind of think about it like this. All right, notice how I didn't put the decimal in this problem over here. 12 times three would be two times three is six, three times one is three, so 36, okay? Or the same thing over here, 36. Now, here's what you do. However many decimals are behind the decimal, I'm sorry, however many digits are behind the decimal, you gotta count that up because you're gonna use that number. So we've got a two there behind the decimal, we've got a zero behind the decimal, and we have a three behind the decimal. So we have a total of one, two, three digits behind the decimal. So what you do is you pretend like your decimal is right here in your product, and you go one, two, Three, and that is where your decimal is going to be. Let me move that so you can see it right here. Okay, and then you put a zero in that extra space. So this is what it would look like: point zero three six or thirty six thousandths. You could even put a zero right there to hold that ones place. So, which I like to do: zero. 3600, okay? Now for dividing decimals. Oh, let me put it here. So, three digits behind, sorry, forgot to write this down. The decimal. Okay, you should record that down. Now for dividing decimals, you do the same thing. You're gonna set it up. Not the same thing, I'm sorry. Set it up. So this is our divisor. We talked about that in an earlier episode. Episode one, two, two, I think. And we're gonna put our dividend inside of the division bar, okay? And here's the rule for divi dividing decimals. You can have decimals in here, inside, but you can't have decimals outside, okay? So this decimal has to move over until it's no longer there, okay? And because that moved one place value space over to the right, so does this one. So to set that up, it would be five on the outside, and now this would be 15 on the inside, and how many times does five go into th 15? Three times, okay? So three is your answer. Actually, two, this is where you would put Wherever your decimal is, you'd also put it there, but because that would be three and zero tenths, you can just leave it as three. That was a lot for boss notes. Let's get to the practice. Let's learn it, everybody. So we're on number one, and the directions say to find the product or find the quotient. We are multiplying here 
So we're going to find the product, okay? Now, we have done multi-digit multiplication. The only thing that you have to do is just line it up, okay? So, 12 and 55 hundredths times 0 and 16 hundredths. Now we're just going to pretend like the decimal is not there and follow our standard multi-digit multiplication rules, which you can find in lesson one, week one. All right. So six times five is 30. Six times five is 30 plus three is 33. Six times two is 12 plus three is 15. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 1 is 7, okay? Don't put any decimals in yet. Now I'm done with the 6. I'm going to put a 0 here to hold the place, and I'm going to get rid of my regroupies, okay? 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 2 is 2, and 1 times 1 is 1. Add up those digits. 0, 8, 10, don't forget to get that one, um, 1 plus 7 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, so we have 2 there. Okay, so now this is where we plug in our decimal. So first you count, go back to your original problem, count up the number of digits behind the decimal. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 digits behind the decimal, so we start here, and we just do 4 hops. One two, three, four, there it is. Now to rewrite that, it would be two and eight thousandths. Because really, you don't really need this guy right there, so we'll just leave him as that. And there you go. All right, everybody, number two. And now we are finding the quotient because we are dividing. So for division, you set it up just like you do for long division. Here's our divisor which again, if you need to see long division in action, make sure you go to uh, week two on the same playlist. Um, so nine and one tenth, and we've got 400, nine and five tenths. Now remember, the rule is you can have decimals inside, but you cannot have any decimals outside. So here is a decimal. It cannot be there. We need to bring it over until it's no longer there. We brought it over one hop there, so we're going to move one space there, okay? And then our decimal would actually come up like that. But I like to rewrite it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that as 91 with my divisor and 400, I'm sorry, 4905, and there's my decimal, and there's my decimal if I need to get there, okay? All right, so how many times does 91 go into 4? It can't. How many times can 91 go into 40? It can't. It's too small. How many times can 91 go into 409? Well, I know that 90 can go into 40, maybe about four times, because 9 times 4 is 36, which is close to 40. Let's see. 4, 364. And then 9 times 5 would be 5, and then 455, which is too much, so 4 times. Now we multiply. 4 times 91 is 364. 4, then we subtract. 9 minus 4 is 5. 0 minus 6, we can't do that, so we regroup. 10 minus 6 is 4. Bring down our 5. Goes into it. How many times does 91 go into 455? It's right there, five times. Easy peasy. And we get a remainder of zero. So 45 will be our answer. So now we're at the practice it section. You see? Um, so for practice it, this is where you can make a choice. Either you can pause the video and you can go give this a try on your own, the last two problems, or you can continue to stick with me. <coughs> Excuse me. You can continue to stick with me 
and go over it with me. Um, either way, I don't. I do want you to pay attention to this. So if you do choose to go do it on your own, make sure you come back to make sure your steps were the same as my steps. So make your choice now. Okay. One hundred. Sorry. One and forty three hundredths times twenty six. We are finding the quotient or the product. The product, because the product, finding the product if we're multiplying. Okay. Um, so to set it up, I just set it up like normal. And I multiply. Okay. So 6 times 3 is 18. 6 times 4 is 24. Plus 1 is 20. Five. Six times one, six, plus two, eight. All right. <clears throat> Put a zero there to hold the place. We're done with my six and get rid of my regroupies. That's what I like to call them, regroupies. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight. Two times one is Two, you guys should be sharp right now with your multiplication, very fluent at this point. If not, you need to find some kind of program to help you, okay? Add them up, eight. Five plus six is 11. Eight plus eight is 16, plus one is 17. One plus two is three. Now, what is the rule when we have decimals and we are multiplying? You count the digits behind the decimal. I have two digits behind the decimal, so I start here. And how many jumps do I move inward? Two. One, two. Put it there, and then I just like to rewrite it down below so it doesn't look so sloppy. There you go. 37 18 hundredths. Last one coming up. Okay, we are on number four for the practice it. This is the last one for today, and we are dividing, which means we are finding the product or the quotient. The quotient. Very good. All right, so you're either choosing right now to do this with me or to do it on your own and then come back and check your work. Make your choice. All right, we are dividing. So what do I do first? Line it up just like normal. Set it up, I mean, just like normal. So here's our divisor. It goes on the outside. And our dividend goes inside. Okay? What is the rule, the one thing you need to remember about division of decimals? Good. Can div decimals be here in the dividend? Yes. Can they be outside here in the divisor? No. you got to move them over. Ship them out, boom, and ship them out, boom. All right, so seven, that's now seven, because it's like zero seven, but I'm just calling it seven. And the, excuse me, then we have 22 and four, and there will be the decimal there if we need to use it. We'll see. Seven goes into two, it can't. How many times does seven go into 22? About three times, because three times seven is 20. One, now we subtract. Two minus one is one. Two minus two is zero. We bring down our four. All right, seven goes into 14 twice. Two times seven is 14. We subtract and we get zero. So this number right here would equal 32, okay? Easy peasy. Let's get to our B message. Today's B message is to be charismatic like a boss. Charismatic is a big word, but really it means to be somebody who makes other people feel like they matter. Charismatic people are the types of people who light up the room and people want to be around you. They build relationships and they maintain positive relationships with people. So how can you be more charismatic like a boss? Well, start by listening more than you talk. Give your full attention to the person who is speaking. Um, you need to be remarkably giving without expecting anything else in return. 
instead of focusing on you and shining the spotlight on you, shine the spotlight on other people. Be humble. Share when you've messed up because in the end, it makes you more approachable. So work on that, people. I want you to be charismatic like a boss. Get ready. Get strong.